coming up on today's message with Pastor Johnny. Jesus does not care about those labels, the history, their status. Jesus is here to heal the brokenhearted. He's here to save souls. He's here to set captives free. Amen. Let's get into the word. Uh, Today's message is going to come from the gospel according to Luke. I'll be reading the sixth chapter, uh, verses 17 through 26. Again, that is the gospel according to Luke, chapter 6, verses 17 through 26. I'll be reading the New International Version of God's Word. Let's uh, see what it has to say for us today. Amen. Hear ye the word of the Lord. He, he being Jesus, went down with them and stood on a level place. A large crowd of his disciples was there and a great number of people from all over Judea, from Jerusalem, and from the coastal region around Tyre and Sidon who had come to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. Those troubled by impure spirits were cured, and the people all tried to touch him because power was coming from him and healing them all. Looking at his disciples, he said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, when they exclude you and insult you and reject your name as evil because of the Son of Man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, because great is your reward in heaven, for that is how their ancestors treated the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, For you have already received your comfort. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you will go hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when everyone speaks well of you, for that is how their ancestors treated the false prophets. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me, church. O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We thank you for this opportunity to gather and delve into your word, Lord God. God, I ask that every word that I speak and thought that I think be acceptable in your sight, Lord God. Hide me behind your cross so that people don't see me, but they see Jesus. And that they'll want to know Jesus in the pardoning of their sins. Let this be a seed that is planted in good soil and produces a great harvest. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Uh, For the time that we get to spend together today, I'd like to talk a little bit about a reversal. A reversal. I love a good comeback story. I want to see stories in movies and television shows and books where someone who is Uh, used to being the boss and and mistreating others uh, must now have to deal with someone else in charge where the person that was on the low end of the ranking system is now on the high end. Uh, When I play uh, the card game Uno, I like to see the reverse card played at the perfect time to change the game's direction. I would say we all love a good comeback story. Uh, I would say we probably all have uh, comeback stories of our own. Uh, We like to see the tables turned. As a matter of fact, the more things change, the more exciting we think something is. Uh, When we watch sports games, we don't wanna watch 
uh, games where one team just beats the brakes off the other team for the entire game. If that's on the television screen, we turn that off. We find something else to do with our time. However, when there is a game where the lead changes repeatedly and we don't know who's going to win until the very end, we watch those games and we watch them intently. According to Luke, there is a reversal in scripture today in this text from the gospel. This sermon uh, from Jesus is pretty popular. It's called the Beatitudes. Um, but normally when they talk about the Beatitudes, they're talking about Matthew because uh, that's the popular one. Uh, in the gospel, according to Matthew, the Luke version reads a little differently than the Matthew version. In the gospel, according to Matthew, uh, there are nine Beatitudes. In the gospel, according to Luke, there are four. Uh, the Beatitude sermon or the Sermon on the Mount in the gospel, according to Matthew, is 107 verses. Uh, but in the gospel, according to Luke, it's the Sermon on the Plain. And there are 32. Um, I don't find a problem in that simply because uh, if you ask my son after school, how was school today? Great. But if you ask my daughter, how was school today? It was great. I got to play with Sabrina. I got to play this. We did this in gym class. I had this for lunch. But some people use more words to get their point across than others, but they both had great days. Matthew just happens to be a more church-friendly, um, spiritually focused gospel uh, where uh, Luke is more day-to-day, -day, get things done. Uh, if the gospel, according to Matthew, was talking about something, they might say that it is good uh, to feed the poor and have a food pantry. Where Luke would ask, why don't you have one already? Matthew might say it's good to give to the poor. Luke would say, why aren't you working to help these people find jobs? And if they have jobs, why aren't you working to make sure these people have wage equality? Luke focused on the socioeconomic status of the people. He didn't just have a, a highfalutin, uh, high-minded, I'll be spiritual and say the right things. Luke talked about the nitty to the gritty of what was getting done. And the church did not catch a break in the gospel according to Luke. No wonder Matthew is uh, the first book of the old of the New Testament, rather, even though it wasn't written first. The text says that Jesus came down with his disciples. He'd been on the mountain uh, with the 12 disciples and he'd given them new names right before we get to verse 17. And this is an introduction to the disciples of Christ. Uh, and Jesus was in the mountains with his disciples. And the text says he came down to the mountain and stood on a level place equal with his disciples. And Jesus had a great crowd around him and when this great crowd was around him he healed the sick he he preached to them and, and he healed many people from Judah and Jerusalem and people came from the coast of Tyre and Sidon I'll put that reverse card down I'll say it again uh, he healed many people and the text says that they came from Judah and Jerusalem and then Tyre and and Sidon. They say that the third time's a charm, so I'll do this one more time. He says that Jesus came down from the mountain and started to heal people and teach. And there were people from Judah and Jerusalem, as expected, but there were people from Tyre and Sidon. Why are those towns important? Well, 
to understand uh, Luke 6 a little better, we need to go all the way back to Genesis 9. Uh, in Genesis 9, there was a man named Noah. Uh, Noah uh, said it was go- God told Noah it was going to rain before it, it had ever rained before. He built an ark, put the, uh, the animals two by two in the family and all of them in the ark and they were saved. Well, um, Noah was, was a person, right? He had his flaws, he wasn't always this faith giant, this hero, and, and, and Noah liked to drink a little bit. Noah liked to drink a lot. And, and in Genesis 9, Noah got drunk. Noah got so drunk that he passed out in his tent. Noah got so drunk that not only did he pass out in his tent, he passed out in his tent naked. Noah's son, one of his sons, Ham uh, was his name, saw that Noah was drunk and naked and passed out in his tent, and he went out and told his brothers, Shem and Japheth. And when he told his brothers that his dad, that their dad was drunk and passed out naked in the tent, Shem and Japheth came back to the tent and they walked into the tent backward so that they wouldn't be facing Noah and they put uh, clothing over him to cover him so that people would not see that their dad was naked and drunk and passed out in the tent. Noah woke up later and figured out what happened. Noah didn't like what Ham did and so Noah put a curse on Ham. Noah put a curse on his own son. But not only on Ham, but on Ham's children. And so Ham had a son named Canaan. And Canaan had a son named Sidon. After Noah died, the Israelites uh, you know, Ham and Canaan and Sidon had plenty of children, and they became their own nation. After Noah died and generations to come, the Israelites had conflicts with the Canaanites and the Sidonians for generations. Israel tried to overthrow Sidon in the book of Judges. Queen Jezebel came from Sidon. She was a Sidonian. There is a lot of trouble in the Old Testament that comes from Israel being in conflict with the people who were descendants of Ham. The Israelites considered the descendants of Ham forever cursed, unworthy of being dealt with. Not only that, but there are people today that tried to use the curse on Ham as biblical uh, justification for not dealing with the descendants of Ham. What would be a descendant of Ham? Well, certain people um, teach that uh, Ham had certain physical characteristics and Uh, They were the kind of physical characteristics that you might get from uh, being out in the sun too long. And so they use that as their justification for not dealing with the people who are descendants of Ham because Noah put a curse on them and put a curse on his children and his children's children and so on and so forth. However, when we see Jesus show up, Jesus heals people from that area just like he heals people from Israel. 
Jesus does not care about those labels, the history, their status. Jesus is here to heal the brokenhearted. He's here to save souls. He's here to set captives free. Jesus blesses people that society would not bless. But not only that, Jesus says woe to people that society would not say woe to. Jesus does not care about their social status or how much money they have in the bank. Uh, most people uh, consider wealth a blessing. But Jesus doesn't see it that way in this week's gospel lesson. He says, blessed to you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God, he teaches. And then a little later, he says, uh, choice words to those, woe to you who are rich, for you have see received your consolation. You know, the most uh, uh, significant difference uh, from the gospel according to Luke and the gospel according to Matthew's telling of the Beatitudes is uh, uh, Matthew, uh, Matthew's gospel is just blessed, 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 blessed. Luke's gospel is four blessings and then four woes. Jesus blesses certain people but he calls out others. Jesus is here to bless those who are poor. Jesus is here to bless those who are hungry. Jesus is here to bless those who weep. And he preaches woe to the rich, the satisfied, and even those who think it's so great right now, they're having a laugh. Uh, the blessings and woes that Jesus mentioned in Luke 6 fulfill what was prophesied all the way back in Isaiah 61. God's favor is on the poor and the hungry and those who are weeping and those who are hated. The biggest comeback, the biggest reversal that you can imagine is happening when Jesus goes into action. Jesus is pulling out the ultimate reverse card when it comes to those he's saving because he's coming to save the least, the last, and the lost. And he has reversed our fortunes for the better. Because we were all separated from God since the fall of man with no way to work our way into heaven. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Jesus comes and does something that turns the world upside down. He's blessing those who you would not think would be blessed. All of us who are born in sin, he's blessing those and giving us access to eternal life. He is reversing our course. He is reversing our destination because he willingly gave himself up for us. No matter where we started, he's here to give us a fantastic finish. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the doors of the church are open, and we invite you to come. Pray with me, church. O oh Lord, our God, how excellent is your name in all the earth. We thank you for this opportunity to hear your word and hear that you how you reversed the course for us so that we can have access to eternal life, that we can have life and have it more abundantly. Lord God, we ask that the word that went forth be a seed that is planted in good soil and produces a great harvest for those who heard it and those who will hear it later. That it'll produce a harvest 30, 60, 100 fold for your kingdom. It is in your son's precious, perfect, powerful name, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Don't forget to connect with me on social media, Pastor Johnny Simpson Jr. on Facebook, at Pastor J. Simpson Jr. on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks again for watching, and God bless.